And where is where's all this gone? I'm coming 82. I don't remember anything from 65 to now. It's just gone fast. Time passes. Mm. But, you know, even though I feel every minute, it's... Well, it also makes you stop and think about where your life has been. Yes. Yes. And thank God I don't know where it's going. But it's there for everyone if they want to take it, want to take a chance. Oh, it's been a fabulous adventure. Uh, to go back when I was, well, I was born in 35 and the war started in 39. Three of the families on our street, that's my family and my aunt and uncle and somebody else, we should build an air raid shelter well, nobody else wanted to do it because they'd got a shack at the end of their gardens. So we built this air raid shelter. And there was no electricity, there was no heat. There was four little bricks to get some air in. And my job, oh, I had a lovely job. When the siren went, here's I'm only, what? five or whatever, four or five. My job was to pick up this little bag because my brother was a little baby then and mum had to carry him and chances are that my dad would be working and couldn't get home. So I got this little bag and it had all our ration books in it and our birth certificates and I really thought I was it carrying this little thing. Um, after the war, the air raid shelter stayed there for a while. Somebody took the door off and one day I came home and my mum said, uh, there's a tramp hobo in the air raid shelter his name's Joe, because Joe had passed every house in our street and gone to ours. And he'd handed my mother this tin, and he said, Lady, can you spare a cup of tea? So my mother, being the wonderful woman she was, washed his can out, filled it up, made him a sandwich, and he spent the night in the shelter. The next year, I go home, Joe's here, all the kids were in the air raid shelter now, talking to Joe and listening to his life story. And this went on for years, and one year he didn't come, and the next year he didn't come. And after the third year, we figured he wasn't coming. But to sit and listen to him, like most people are scared of, uh, anyway, just all those silly little things that, uh, when I was five, my mum and dad took me down to the hall in our little village. The village of Bishopthorpe, which is just outside the city of York, and Bishopthorpe has a palace in it. That's the palace of the Archbishops of York, and it's an own thing. Every time the Archbishop of Canterbury dies, the Archbishop of York steps in, so it's, it's quaint little village. We went down there and I became a brownie. I was five years old. And oh, I'm 80, over 80 now, and I've never left the movement. I think it has so much to offer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was, because we were Roman Catholic, we had to go to Roman Catholic schools. And I hated them. Um, that's a story I don't really like to talk about. But I had to go on a bus to the city of York and uh, my father said my brother wasn't going so Pat got to go to uh, a good school. So the last two years of school I was supposed to be at, I'd go on the bus and meet up with a couple of friends and we'd go and sit in the big minster, the York Minster, has the second largest bell in the world. 
and we'd go and sit in there all day because we didn't like Catholic schools. <laughs> My parents never knew that. <laughs> well, the world is full of people and, and everybody has a different thing. Um, the one thing that really bothered me, I was old enough at the end of the war when they were showing those pictures of those women that were being sent to the gas chamber. And they were emaciated, they were starved, they were beaten, and they were raped. And these rapes produced babies. And when they were going to their death, they were trying to hide their children in the clothes they were forced to take off. And that is one of, I, I go, the worst things I ever saw. Um, how can people do that? Yeah. How can people be so wicked? You know, uh, well, he was a maniac. Oh, yeah. But, but a lot, yeah. of, a lot of times people went along with him. Yeah. Well, there were some Polish children came to our school. They were Catholics. The, most of the Polish were Catholic. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I adopted one as my sister, and she used to come out and stay with us. Anka, Anka Petru, I think. And learnt lots talking. They had to leave children over there and uh, and never learn because there's always another war or, or something else when life can be so beautiful mm -hmm. I mean even standing in the rain is a good thing it makes you 